Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And before we get into today's video, I will be live streaming tonight on the channel and on Twitch from around 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time until around 8 to 9 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So if you want to come hang out with us then, I invite you to do so. And streaming is what brings you this video because I was wrong about the Georgia. So last week I made a video called something along the lines of the ship was amazing when it was released, now it's complete garbage. And the subject of that video was the Georgia. Now the reason why I made that video is initially because I was going to make a different video. I hadn't done a video on the Georgia in some time, and the way this game works, it evolves year to year drastically in some cases. So ships, as the game continues to grow old, will typically fluctuate in their usefulness. And since the Georgia is currently available in the, uh, well, I don't know if it's still up, but it was available at the time in the Independence Day containers, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video on the Georgia, talk about how she does in today's World of Warships, so that those of you that kept asking me, hey, is the Georgia worth trying to get in the, in the bundles, yada, 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 would have an answer. And well, I played the Georgia for a little over two and a half hours. I think I still have the, the file on my... Uh, computer and I had just completely terrible games now typically in World Warships from my experience if you play for around two or three hours straight especially playing one ship you'll have at least a handful of games where the ship performs well just given the nature of of course random battles they're they're random so yes you can have a losing streak for a bit but typically after you know, sometime like an hour, two hours, you will at least have one or two decent games. But that day in the Georgia, I, I just did not have any decent games. And what kept happening is that these games would end incredibly quick. Like, I played for two hours, but I think I had almost like um, 15 games in, which is a lot for two hours, considering you know, the timer is 20 minutes. But yeah, so I had a terrible experience with the Georgia. The The teams were incredibly passive one way or the other. Either the team that my team was facing wouldn't push up or anything like that. And then my team, sometimes the destroyers were hanging back further than the battleships for some reason. So, of course, in those situations when you have no team support, no one wants to push up and do anything, you're going to have a bad time. And that continued on for two hours. And what I was getting frustrated with is that the Georgia, in that scenario is not great <laughs> especially with the build that i had on it now a lot of you guys rightfully called me out for my hot take on the georgia saying hey you know like you, you have a brawler build on it you should know that that doesn't really do too well in today's world of warships you should be building to the main battery guns yada 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 because you had a couple of hours of bad games doesn't mean that georgia is a terrible ship and you know what you guys are right because come friday night we took her out on stream and guess what? She did fine. It is very much true that I am running a build of yesteryear on my Georgia. In that video, I was running a hybrid secondary main battery gun build. I did have the American improved Plotting Room Mod 2 module on, which gives the main battery guns an 11% boost to their dispersion. Uh, which normally is very, very, very good and pretty noticeable on the main battery guns. But just the nature of Georgia's guns, they are... Well, only six of them. And any time you do have a battleship with six guns, it does hurt for every single shell that misses. So when I am having to engage targets out to 20 kilometers, which is the maximum of Georgia's range with the build that I was running, uh, you know, one or two shells would hit an overpin and then the rest would miss because at that range, again, the American AP flight time is horrendously long. So the lead time was quite great. And considering I was stuck at those ranges for, again, like the past two hours it was very much uh unfortunate uh, i know some said you need to put the range model on but like i mean with american ap out to 20 kilometers even with the most accurate american battleship guns the flight time's just insane and most ships that are paying attention will easily be able to dodge uh your shells in that situation but the point being is that the georgia itself isn't a terrible ship when it gets in the right scenario it's just that it's uh, someone, well, quite a few someones did point that out. It sounded like I was complaining more about the uh, tier 9 and tier 10 uh, state of the game rather than the ship itself, which 
I would definitely agree going back and looking at that video now. My problems were that A, teams are hanging back. B, I was getting little to no team support because everyone's being so passive. And C, the games were ending so quick before I really had time to, to do anything. And that isn't the Georgia's fault. Because, again, the gameplay you're watching in the background, when we have teams that are willing to push, when we have DDs that are willing to spot, as they should be, ship does well. Ship does incredibly well. Now, regardless of how the ship had performed in that two-hour play session, I was going to say she wasn't worth gambling your money away to get anyway, because the, the truth of the matter is you're not guaranteed to get the ship unless you have every single other American ship that's in those containers, and you would probably easily spend a couple hundred bucks for a ship that, again, isn't necessarily a bad ship, but is definitely not in the meta of today's World of Warships. She's still very much good if you get on a flank like we had in this game in the background. And again, if probably at this point, you've probably seen a whole rack of Fletcher torpedoes, and thanks to the heal, I was able to quickly get back into the game and then run down the flank. And yeah, the flank was mostly unguarded. And when you can do that, again, the ship does perform quite well, as again, you're seeing in the background footage right now. So overall, I was wrong in that take. There are a couple things that were brought up in the comments that I do want to talk about, about the Georgia anyway. One is the IFHE and the secondaries. I know quite a few of you guys saying, well, take IFHE to so the secondaries given 26, and with the likes of the battle cruisers and such in today's game, they'll perform better. I would still disagree with taking IFHE because you still have some incredibly fast-firing secondary guns. And when you can get the accuracy built up, yes, they aren't anywhere near what they used to be. Um, if you guys remember back in, well, pre-commander rework, you could take the secondary commander skills and you would have laser pointers for your secondary guns on the American battleships. But in today's World of Warships with the new secondary skills, the guns aren't laser accurate and that's actually a good thing. Why? Because... When you had the laser accurate guns, the AI would aim for literally the dead center of the ship on the side armor. Which, when you have guns that can only pin 21 millimeters of armor, means that most of those shells are just shattering against the side. But, now that you have these secondaries that are a bit less accurate, you have a lot more that are hitting the superstructure and hitting the deck, and you're having a better chance of getting some pin damage and fire. Again, because the, the guns still do have plenty of fast of a, re, of, re, of a reload time. So, in my mind at least, going with the higher fire chance, and with the nature of the way that the shells fall now, when you're going against you know battleships and such, you have a better chance of hitting the superstructure, because it's only 19 millimeters at tier 10, pinning that, and maintaining that fire chance is pretty important too, because with the sheer volume of fire out of your secondary guns, you'll probably probably be starting quite a few fires when you can get into secondary range. So, in my mind, I think I still have the best secondary build on the Georgia. In my mind, at least. In my mind. I'm not saying that I am, like, 100% correct. I'm just saying, from what I've seen and from my experience... It seems to be working out just fine when you can get in secondary range. The second thing, and I kind of briefly touched on this, was uh, all the comments saying we'll put a main battery build on it and learn how to aim at long distances. Again, the flight time of the shells at those ranges is so incredibly long that even ships like the Vermont will have time to maneuver. So while, yes, if you do learn how to aim, you can get shells on target out to, I think it pushes out to what 24 kilometers 20 23 kilometers 25 kilometers if you take the plotting room uh, mod mod uh, mod one module on the American battleships unless you're shooting a carrier that doesn't really know what their uh, situation is or a battleship that's literally selling in a straight line and for the next like I think it's still like 15 seconds the flight time at those ranges is not going to touch a or D Yes, you can get shells on target, but again, at that range, it's kind of crazy, the flight time, the lead you have to give those ships, and the, the, the degree to which those ships have to be so um, inattentive to the game. Now, just saying all that, of course, there are players that are like that, but you're not really going to be running into them in uh, too much in today's game, so I'm not sure I would really take that. 
because again, I, I don't even take that on. Why well, do you take on the Montana? Because there's nothing really else to take there, and I. I do have it on my Ohio right now because of clan battles. Sometimes you still just need, do need to try and make those shots for clan battles. But for random battles, I'm not 100% on board with the like you know, going full main battery build. Now, respecting into the tankiness and the survivability, yes, I would say that's probably a, a very, very good alternative. Probably even a better alternative than a full secondary build. You know, take the secondary module, but still for the uh, commander skills, build into the typical... Uh, battleship tank build that way you do have a little bit of secondary firepower but you still have you know basics basics of survivability and you can take the full you know concealment expert fire prevention and um discount superintendent now with the commander rework i do think that would be a, a very good build on the georgia if you want to play it better in today's world of warships because you do have a lot more of that passive gameplay where you do have to kind of sit in the back and snipe and given the georgia's armor scheme that would make sense in my mind, and that's something I probably might try out um, rather than take my secondary build on my Georgia. I just like taking it because I had so much fun in this ship back when it first came out. It was such a fun ship to just, you know, slap W, go run down a flank, find the sides of the enemy ships, use your 18-inch guns to your advantage, and then, you know, you run down the DDs with the secondaries. So... I was just not having a great time in the Georgia when I sat down to play the, the ship for that video and make that video and i guess it was just all the uh realization that the heyday of the georgia is kind of over it just can't unfortunately perform as well as it used to as easy as you used to be able to do it just because of the nature of higher tier and well again just the way that the game is going overall but it's still a solid ship it's still a good ship if you do get it in a container Great, you got a fun ship. It's going to absolutely walk over everything in ranked if uh, w when rank comes back to tier 9. Absolutely, no doubt in my mind. So, yes, it's a good ship, and I was completely incorrect in calling it a uh, bad ship in last week's video. So, guys, that's my updated two cents on the Georgia. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers, getting very close to that goal, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you guys have a great week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.